Welcome back to Vampire. We've returned to the Whitechapel area, and we need to... Well, we don't have to, but I want to. Speak with the shopkeeper and speak with that thug I over there. Since we have all sorts of hints that we didn't know before, it should allow us to do something about the situation. Fancy buying something? You never... What do you know of Harry Peterson? The boy seems so fragile, not like his father at all. That's the thug's son. Boy, but he spends most of his time complaining. He's had it tough, all right, but he needs to grow a pair. What troubles him exactly? Well, despite being his father's son, almost everything, I think. He never wanted to come to Whitechapel in the first place. Hates this place more than most of us. Goodbye for now. Where do they go off to again? I never can find out where they go. They were standing right here. I, I mean, they could be in their home. This is their home right here. Where do they get off to? I suppose I should use my senses. Oh. Hey there. You again. Harry doesn't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why did you make him come here? I've always put my son's interests above everything else, whatever he may think. Our house is small but affordable. The walls are thin, but the door is solid. You really love your son, don't you, Mr. Peterson? He's my pride and joy. Even if he hates me for the choices I make and pushes me buttons more than he should. Do you have any regrets? Only one. Not to have my beloved wife by my side. She died when Harry was little. My sweet Jane. She gave the boy confidence. Since the criminal nature of your job means you could be arrested, are you not afraid of what would happen to your boy if you were? No one will ever take my son away from me. If that ever occurred, I'd... I'd hunt the bastard down and rip off his head with my bare hands. Why do you keep on working for the gang, Joe? You know it doesn't suit you. It's true, I hate this job. And I know I made some bad choices, but I'm a wet boot boy now. And people won't forget it. You could leave tomorrow. Start another life in another town. That's easy for you to say, Doctor. We are poor. My son's weak. And there's no way he'll endure another disappointment. Hmm. So we've gotten like almost everything. There's still one hint left here. What could it be? Maybe I need to go speak with the sun again? Um, I guess I'll ask about Dorothy Crane. Not really any point. I'm gonna skip through. Have you it. heard of a nerd? Dorothy Crane? Could you please tell me? She's a nice girl. Yep. Goodbye, Miss. You know, something I hadn't thought of until now is remember the note. Oh, good evening, Harry. I didn't think I'd have to ask May to come, come in. in. Sure. Sure. Even my dreams are soaked with glue. It makes sense that I'd have to ask to come in if somebody's in here, but I'm just so used to having like the run of the the run of the area. I mean, I just looted their entire house a little while ago, and they didn't care. <laughs> anyway. Um, something that I hadn't thought of until now. Remember that note that we saw up here? The, um, the job refusal letter from some sort of a company. Basically refusing, um, is it Patterson? Refusing Patterson, the thug, the job. Because they didn't want anybody who had been involved in criminal undertakings. Apparently they knew that they had been involved in the Wet Boot Boys, and so that's why they refused to hire them. It just got me thinking. Talking about uh, them talking about how they don't actually like this job. They don't actually want to do it. They just can't find anything else. And I just realized how sad it is that they can't do something else. They want to. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't like them. I think they're an asshole. But still, they want to do something else. They tried to apply for a job and they got rejected specifically because they're associated with a gang. So, like, now that they're associated with a gang, now it, it's a lot harder to to switch, even if they want to, to do something else with their life. That's... 
I don't know, it's just sad because it's understandable. I mean, from the position of the person who's doing the hiring, would you want somebody who's associated with a gang? I understand why they wouldn't be worried about safety, about stealing, about violence. It's like understandable from both sides. You want to switch jobs, you try, and then they rather, rather reasonably refuse you. It's just kind of sad. Ah, there's something new. I can tell them about uh, their father's search for a job. Would it ease tensions with your father if he got an honest job? Because he tried, you know. I can't say. I'd be glad if he dropped his thuggish activities. But I'm not sure it would be enough. Why is that? Sometimes I suspect it's me, Dr. Reed. Or it's this life. It's like I can't find my place. Peterson. That's the family name. Peterson, not Patterson. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Even my dreams are soaked with glue. I'm not sure what to do with that family and the shopkeeper now. Maybe I'll just get some hint from someone else at some later time. Okay. Well, in that case, what am I doing here? I need to find Richard Nither... Nithercott and Clayton Darby for the main quest. I guess one of them will be here and one of them will be over here. So let's just search the area. Oh, you must be the journalist. Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Yeah, they are investigating the medical dispensary. The same one that we're investigating. What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. That's daring. God, it's so dangerous here. Oh, how are you doing, by the way? Fatigue? Oh, I'm out of treatments for fatigue. I'll have to make another one. So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. I respect that. That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. That's a strange stance for a reporter to take. I understand why somebody in a like a position of power over a large group of people, I don't know, governor, president, or whatever, would would uh, would think like that, withholding the truth for the sake of morale. But I would expect a reporter to think kind of the opposite, that people deserve to know the truth. I mean, that's what they just kind of spoke about. Strange. It's a disgrace. People are left to die alone. No one is properly informed of the risks. These are bad times indeed. So much for the glorious British Empire. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? Whatever I say is probably going to end up in an article. But, I do want people to know the truth. I'm convinced there is more at work here than a simple epidemic. Really? <sighs> to be honest, I could say the same. Some of the sick I saw or heard of. My God, what happened to them? I heard you are investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers, and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? Do I let on why I'm doing it? 
Hmm. A nurse I know is compromised. I don't know, are they? I mean, I did start following them when they were talking with some... some thugs. Or mobsters or something like that. I don't know what that was about. But everything I've seen about them... looks like they're... trying to, to help the people here. Giving out medicine for free. I don't know about the, uh... the person, like the old person who's... running a storefront, but... the nurse. Dorothy Crane seems to be doing good, so I don't want to say they're compromised. Um, well, I'm a doctor. I'll just say I care about public health. I do. I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. I have my own scoop, journalist. Clayton Darby, would you like to know? That person, Darius, has bronchitis. He has no relatives at all? No, except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Find the mailbox and the letter. Hmm. Wait, what? I don't understand. I'm supposed to find the mailbox and the letter, but it's been ripped up, so what am I going to do? Reconstruct it? Also, it's raining, so it's going to be wet. Am I going to reconstruct a, a wet, ripped letter? I mean, if I can just read it, then why wouldn't the journalist have gone and just read it? Strange. You look angry. Hold on. Let's get a better view. What the hell is that? Is that what a blink looks like? That's disturbing. I'm just gonna say it's because they're a vampire. Also, I just realized time doesn't move when I'm in this mode, so, uh... Yep. Anyway. Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Whitaker is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming Armageddon. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed. And I just have a few questions. A scientist? You are much more lost than I thought, my son. They talk in the third person. I'm not terribly interested in talking with them. Oh, they're worth a lot of XP. Should I slurp them up? Oh, they're level five. Damn. But they might have important hints and stuff. Okay, well, it looks like they don't have too much dialogue. I'll just go through it. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of cool yeah, 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 yeah. you. I'm listening? No, no, I'm not. I am. What do you mean when All you... All you... I am. Have you any friends? Any family left in these terrible times? No. But I have a disciple I see as my son. He is so devoted. I send him to preach the good word in the heart of this corrupted city. And let me guess, they haven't returned and you'd like me to go do a quest? Yes, please? I want more quests. Where did you send him? I sent Samuel to the Stonebridge Cemetery, where the pestilence and evil grows night after night. 
You sent him on some preaching crusade during the epidemic. As a true believer, Samuel will fear no evil while he walks through the valley of the shadow of death. Hope they don't die before I get to him. And yeah, no reason to ask about Dorothy Crane. I have had enough. Does the investigation location show on my map? Hmm. Looks like it doesn't. I think I'd have to make it active, right? There we go. I can only have one active site investigation at a time. Gotcha. It's over there. That's pretty far away, actually. What about this one? Is that on the map? Yeah, that's a lock closer. That's where the mailbox should be. Actually, let's go there right now. Oh, Primwin Exterminator. Alright, so I'm going to have to fight here. It looks like a heavy... Do they have a flame... Th Is that a flamethrower? Holy shit, I think that's a flamethrower. Uh, so how am I doing on supplies? I haven't fought for a while. I got a good amount of shotgun. Um, I have blood. I have no healing serums, though. But I could just use blood to get blood and then heal myself with autophagy. Should I try to parry? Go for the two-handed thing? Sure. Ooh. This is no place for you, sir. He's mine! Okay, um... Oh. Yeah, I kind of want to get away from the flamethrower person. <laughs> Fuck you. Don't throw that at me. Ew. Flamethrower, that's like, I don't know what the hell that is. I <laughs> can't reach me, you don't have much of a range there, buddy. That was a very wet noise when they hit the ground. <laughs> I guess it is muddy. It's raining. Spring in a shotgun shell. Nice. Yeah, they're like acid whatever thing. Um, it seems to have a pretty generous hitbox in their favor. Even when it looked, didn't look like I was really in the way of it, I would still get hit. Whoa. Large beast. Hope it's not as hard as the other beast that I fought. The other one had a health bar that was like a boss. Hopefully this one isn't. Oh, if only I could break all those boxes, it'd be so satisfying. Oh, Jesus. I'm trying to parry. I don't know if I... I might not be able to parry this thing. Oh! Jesus Christ! Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, Jesus. No. Uh. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh no. Help. Please, where am I? Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. Sure.
Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Do I try to fight it again? Um, I don't know. It didn't look like I can parry it, or at least it does so much damage that I'm scared to try. Do I have a quest in here? That's around where the mailbox is. Is it inside? Is that the mailbox or is that something else? I don't know. It's a weird place for a mailbox. I mean, I should be able to take it, right? It's level 10, I'm level 9. Easy peasy. It's got a bit of physical resistance. Um, not much shadow or... I guess that's gun? But it's got some blood resistance. And some physical resistance. Guess I just gotta shoot it a bunch. Maybe I should get, like, a... Sneak attack on it. Oh yeah, this is doing really well. Oh no, oh no. Oh, that sounds horrible. Okay, uh, I should have some ammo for the pistol, I hope? I'm assuming so. 18 shots, yes. God. Wow. Yeah, it's really worth it to save your your ammo, huh? I could not have done that with just melee. No way. Holy shit. That's terrifying. Where's your damn box, Lewis? Satisfying. Is it not actually inside the building? Maybe it's just outside of it. Oh, hello. Let's go back to the two handed. Also, hello. Used hatchet. A small axe primarily used to cut firewood. I've got the stuff to upgrade it. Can't do that here, of course. Actually, let's take a closer look at that. How does that compare? It's a one-handed weapon. So let's say the machete. How does it compare to the machete? Attack speed is... Slower. That's slower, right? Yeah, it's... Significantly slower, significantly more stamina, and only a little bit more damage. That's terrible. They're down, thankfully. That's really nice looking. Let's get a look at that. Okay, I probably shouldn't look at it that close, but... From, like, here, it's really nice. I like the warm glow on Jonathan's creepy face. There, took a screenshot of this. It's kind of hard to find a good angle here, but this is, like, a fisheye. Kind of looks like maybe a rat's view. Jesus, no! No, 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 no. Please. Please let me teleport up there. 
Jesus Christ. Up there? Maybe I can't teleport. I probably can't teleport during combat, huh? Which means I won't be able to teleport in here. Yep. Oh, this this one's even higher level. Okay. Uh, I'm out of here. This is not happening. I'm just too weak for this. Oh, thank God. Jesus Christ. Okay. I, I don't know where it was exactly, but we can follow up on that later. Let's look... Behind the church, that's where the poet's supposed to be, right? You are blinded by your false faith. <laughs> Shit. The poet's back here? The monsters behind the church. Trying to parry. Tried to bury. Yeah, I'm definitely underpowered for this place, because these enemies shouldn't be this hard. We guys should just be shooting him. Should I be using, like, my pistol? I don't know, maybe. Influenza quarantine. By order of Board of Health. Health officer. Influenza frequently complicated with pneumonia to prevent any case of Spanish flu, stay at home. I think that's the poet back there, in the graveyard behind the church. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please, be my guest. 
Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Richard Nithercott, at your service. May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. And everyone suffers just as much. Well, that's probably not true. No, I'm sure that's actually not true at all. Rich people with the Spanish flu can probably get much better treatment. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy, but the scourge has not been all bad for the city. Oh, no, sir. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Noisy, cacophonic, quiet, nowhere to be found. And now, listen to this oddly peaceful silence. Yeah, about half the time when I'm walking down the streets, I hear the snarl of distant skulls. It's not that quiet. Peaceful? That's quite an unusual way to speak about the epidemic. And very inappropriate, I must say. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them. But how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. Uh, I think I'll just skip through this. I un- I don't. It well, you- I don't want to hear them talk anymore. Oh, how are you doing, by the way? They have a cold. I suppose I'll treat them. I think the, if I remember it, the health of the citizens in a district all, like, uh, together, collaboratively contribute to the health of the district. So I should try to help anybody. And what level are you? Three. Do you need medical... It may be wise to let you... I understand your appetite for words and macabre beauty, sir. You should be more careful. The nutrition of my mind is more important than my physical health, but I appreciate your concern, sir. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But, sorry, no, never heard of her. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. I'll leave you alone, sir. I've got a new hint. Am I going to go to Darius and be like, so how about that socialism, huh? And they'll be like, yeah, come on in. Cool. Taking a little screenshot of this. It's a letter. Right? Or a letter. I, 
guess I missed my prompt. Now I gotta dig through my inventory to find it. <laughs> Damn it. This one's uh, refusal letter sent to Richard Nethercott, the poet. Sycophant Publishing. <laughs> Lavender Court, Camden Street, London, dear Mr. Nethercott. Thank you for sending your book of poems, Songs from the Defeated City, which we found as interesting and profound as we told you the first time we received it. Alas, in the terrible times our country is currently facing, you must understand that that such title would be totally inappropriate for any publication. Thus, since you still refuse to change your title and demand the full publication or none of your work, I'm sorry to announce to you that the Sycophant Publishing Sycophant Publishing chose the second option. With kindest regards, A.G. Morris. Can its own no hint. And grace. My chapel is not just to see. Good evening. And good evening. You don't really make a living from your scribblings, do you, Richard? No, sir, I don't. I work so hard. I put all my time, my energy, my devotion into the precise carving of words. Still, you don't seem to suffer from poverty. With thanks to my parents, actually. I'm afraid I would not be able to live on my own without their help. You seem embarrassed. Someday I hope to proudly offer my first publication to my parents. Until that day, I'll remain the failure of a son they have to support. I wonder where these hints go sometimes. Like, where am I going with this? What's like, do I have an end goal? Am I trying to help Nethercott out or something? Tell me, Mr. Nethercott, why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but... I'm gonna skip uh, how this. Do you... On the, what? Not... And... One... Not particularly interested in this character. They're giving me some hints for other people, though. In what... This, if you suck... Oh, is there anything else that I have now? No. I'll leave. But yeah, I think it was Camilla or something that we got a hint for. Somebody they must know. It's been unlocked. I guess it only opens from that side. Oh, are you Camilla by any chance? Camellia. You are. Flower bouquet. Small flower bouquet with a voucher for a free medical checkup hidden between the flowers. Another one from Dorothy Crane. That's a new hint? For Camellia? Oh. Oh, they're distributing the uh, the pieces of paper, aren't they? Oh, so they're involved. Well, good, they can probably help me then. But, um, I think I'm going to speak with them in the next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to speak with Camellia about uh, Darius Petrescu and Dorothy Crane and that whole operation.